Excuse me, little dog. All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking about an over-the-top beautiful day. Unbelievably gorgeous. Good Friday. Good Friday. Here in the end times and... Uh, it's going to be a busy weekend uh, to make music on a dying planet. I have got to uh, get to uh, my first gig of the weekend here on Good Friday. So I need to get right into this, uh, into this rant. Now, guys, I was going to make this part of my dump the Trump de Hive Roundup rant on Monday, but this essay uh, by Steve Jenko, I guess that's how you pronounce, G-E-N-C-O, from Medium.com, is the single most spot-on analysis of morons that I have ever read. And, you know, I I've been thinking for so long that I need to write an essay on morons. And I was just too much of a moron to write it, but uh, thank you, uh, Steve Jenko. My only little bit of a disappointment is that in in this article, uh, he dwells a whole lot on uh, Trump tards, on on the maggots. You, you know, since they're the most obvious in-your-face morons that we're going to uh, be hearing about, uh, uh, you know, for the next several months is the head, you know, the commander-in-chief moron and all of the, uh, the confederacy of morons gathered around the chief moron. But I'm going to go ahead and, and, and run with it, and uh, you, you, can, you, you can apply everything he says about anybody moronic enough to vote for Donald Trump, that if somebody is that devoid of the tiniest modicum of uh, discernment, critical thinking, nuance, whatever, that they cannot see Donald Trump for what he is, uh, there is no way, no way they're ever going to have the intellectual uh, ability, you know, to think about things like ecological overshoot and, uh, you know, uh, limitless growth on a, infinite growth on a finite planet. But other than those minor uh, problems, so pretty much everything he says about uh, moron maggots in here is true for the, the rest of the gang. But anyway, I'm going to try to shut up. And we're going to turn this over to Steve Jenko. I'll put the link in here. You do need a paid account at medium.com to read it. <clears throat> but I will read the whole thing. Morons at the Gate, Part 1. So this is the first of two parts. Being a moron in America today takes more than low intelligence and of course he's talking mostly about American morons not talking about the, the morons who don't live in America <clears throat> and he starts off with this uh, this little note should Donald Trump somehow manage to get himself reelected which he will because of morons this post will probably land me a basement level cell in one of his snazzy new concentration camps. But I can't help myself. <laughs> Take it away, Steve Jenko. <clears throat> Here is a hard truth. You cannot understand what's happening in America today without facing up to the reality of morons. 
lots and lots of morons. It's a harsh word. Some would say a fighting word. We need a definition we can agree on. The Oxford Dictionary defines moron in three words. A stupid person. It defines stupid a little more expansively. Quote, having or showing a great lack of intelligence or common sense, close quote. Back to Steve. Traditionally, psychologists have measured intelligence with IQ tests, displaying the range of scores as a bell-shaped curve. IQ scores can be troublesome because they remind us that half the population by definition, has below average intelligence. This gets even more troubling when we realize that half the doctors in the country graduated in the bottom half of, that, of their class, or that half the drivers on the road have below average driving skills. You simply can't have a top half of anything without also having a bottom half. It's science. IQ tests are very imperfect measures. To what extent are they measuring nature versus nurture? We still don't know. Are all people with below average IQ scores stupid? I don't think so, primarily because of that second element in the Oxford Dictionary definition, common sense. Raw intelligence and common sense are not as closely aligned as some people would like to imagine. People of low intelligence can have plenty of common sense, and people of high intelligence can have none at all. <clears throat> Being a moron in America today is not about low intelligence. I'm going to argue here that it's about an unwillingness or inability to engage in the most basic forms of evidence-based reasoning where deciding what to believe and what to reject in the world around you. It is a choice, a choice to suspend critical thinking in deference to blind faith and tribal allegiance. A moron is someone who is unwilling to examine his or her own beliefs critically. There is a memorable scene in the 1997 movie, As Good As It Gets, Jack Nicholson plays a popular but misanthropic writer of romance novels. One day he is recognized by a gushing fan who asks him, How do you write women so well? He looks at her with contempt and says, I think of a man and I take away reason and accountability. Of course, this is a terrible and completely sexist thing to say about women. In the movie, it is played for laughs, but in real life, I think this might be an excellent definition of a moron. You start with a man or a woman. You take away reason and accountability. You end up with a moron. <clears throat> In a democracy, morons are particularly dangerous because they are easy, easily manipulated by demagogues. And I'm not going to get into the obvious uh, comment here that you would have to be a fucking moron to believe that the United States is still a democracy. Okay? So we're not going to go there. Uh, you know what he's talking about. In a democracy, morons are particularly dangerous because they are easily manipulated by demagogues. They do not play well in democratic politics 
because they fail to display any of the necessary prerequisites for democratic discourse. They don't compromise, they don't tolerate opposition, and they reject evidence-based reasoning. Today, we have an obvious way to measure the magnitude of morons in our midst. How many of us are blind enough to support the serial narcissist, career grifter, sexual predator, business fraud, and world-class buffoon Donald J. Trump, the Pied Piper of morons? Donald Trump himself is a man of shockingly low intelligence. This is often not appreciated because the mainstream media tends to interpret his inane ramblings as somehow hiding deep strategic thoughts. What does he really mean? He's playing four-dimensional chess. There are no deep strategic thoughts. Trump only says or does what he thinks will benefit him personally in the moment. He is incapable of thinking further ahead. More often than not, what he thinks will benefit him ends up damaging him, another indication that he's not very bright. Whether his ongoing displays of stupidity can be ascribed to ignorance, an entitled life of unearned privilege, low raw intelligence, or some combination of all three, he has a very tenuous grasp of the most basic facts and concepts. <clears throat> Let's not forget that this, well, I don't know if this, anyway, I don't know if this is going to be a quote later. Uh, history, science, international relations, women's reproductive systems, you name it, it is all a mystery to Donald Trump. Let's not forget that this is the man who suggested ingesting bleach or shining a light up your ass might cure COVID. Not only did he say that out loud, you could tell from the infamous video footage that he was proud of coming up with the idea all on his own. He thought it made him look really smart. <clears throat> Personally, I think he also promoted hydrochloroquine as a COVID cure because he thought he looked smart when he correctly pronounced that long word, so he just kept saying it. Of course, uh, I cannot say the word, and as Mikey, Michael Campy would be glad to tell you uh, that uh, Hambone Littletail uh, is on the fence about that long word. <clears throat> Similarly, his, repeat, his repeated bragging about acing a cognitive test designed only to uncover signs of advanced dementia nicely revealed his deep insecurity about his intelligence. Apparently, nobody has the courage to tell him that remembering five words after 10 minutes does not mean you are a genius it only means you don't have advanced dementia yet. And more recently, we enjoyed the spectacle of Trump telling age that more black people would vote for him because he was selling tacky golden sneakers for $399 a pair. These examples remind us that Trump exhibits another sign of a world-class moron. He is oblivious to the fact that what he thinks make him look smart 
actually makes him look dumb. It's a variation of the dummy Kruger effect. He is too dumb to know how dumb he is. On the policy front, his track record is what you would expect from a moron. He still doesn't understand how tariffs work. He doesn't understand how NATO works. He doesn't understand how our intelligence classification systems work. He believes Putin does not lie to him, but America's intelligence agencies do. He thinks you can stop immigration by building a, building walls across the border and Mexico will pay for it. He thinks climate change is a hoax invented by China. He has no idea how the oil industry works and he has no idea where most countries are actually located on the map. And uh, Steve Janko probably just doesn't remember uh, about Donald Trump uh, calling the president of St. Croix after Hurricane Maria when Donald Trump is the president of St. Croix. Uh, Donald Trump does not even, he is such a fucking moron, he does not understand that he is the president of St. Croix. So, it is hardly surprising that senior officials who interacted with him regularly during his presidency, presidency have, de have described him as a, quote, a fucking moron, quote, the most flawed person I have ever met, close quote, someone with the understanding of, quote, a fifth or sixth grader, here is unhinged, an idiot, like an 11-year-old child, and dope with the intelligence of a kindergartner. For these assessments and more, see the sources, which only covers the period up to September of 2018. So how big is our moron problem in America? But what about Trump's loyal followers? Here we come face to face with the real crisis in America. Our biggest problem is not that we have a moron, meaning one moron, running for president and crapping all over our country. It is that we have too many people willing to vote for a moron running for president and crapping all over our country. Here is a man who is barely fit to hold an umbrella, yet he enjoys millions of followers who believe he is fit to hold the highest public office in the land. Who are these people who cannot see this moron for what he is? If he, if he is as stupid as we know he is, and as those who have worked with him confirm, how stupid must his followers be? The frightening answer is that they must be even stupider than Trump. Why? Because they are his fools. He owns their minds and their pocketbooks. Anyone who can be manipulated by a moron is, by, nef by definition, even more of a moron. So here we are. In a backhanded way, Donald Trump has done the country a service by giving us a sure-fired method for spotting the most dangerous morons among us. Just look for the MAGA Republicans who support Donald Trump. Academics have come up with different ways to measure the size of the moron population in America. I prefer a simple definition based on clear attitudinal and behavioral markers. 
A comprehensive study published earlier this year polled a representative panel of 7,255 Americans in May of 2022 about their political beliefs and actions. It defined MAGA Republicans as Republican identifiers who voted for Donald Trump in 2020 and agreed strongly or very strongly with the statement, quote, the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump and Joe Biden is an illegitimate president, close quote. Now, guys, I have to break in here. Uh, I, I, I do believe, uh, as, as, as even a moron uh, can understand, that Joe Biden is an illegitimate president. Okay. Uh, even this moron can, can understand that the moron Joe Biden uh, is an illegitimate president, but it's not because the election, that because he stole the election from the moron Donald Trump. Uh, it's just that Donald Trump was such a moron that he lost the election to a moron such as Joe Biden. But don't worry, it ain't going to happen again because that fucking moron Joe Biden is handing the moron Donald Trump back the presidency. But let me get back to uh, Steve's essay. Based on this definition, you know, about the 2020 election being stolen, they came up with these estimates. MAGA Republicans make up 33.6% of all Republicans with a margin of error of 1.7%. They represent about 15 percent of the U.S. adult population, plus or minus 0.9 percent, they include approximately 38.8 million adult Americans, plus or minus 2.3 million potential morons. Other analyses based on different surveys and definitions of MAGA arrive at slightly different estimates of the group's size. A Washington Post article published in 2022 after Joe Biden initially called out MAGA Republicans as an existential threat to democracy did a bit more winnowing, starting with an estimate that 19 percent of Americans, including both Republicans and independents, thought the election was stolen in 2020. It then asked how many of these folks also, one, su supported down ballot candidates who rejected the 2020 results, two, approved of Trump supporters assaulting the Capitol on January 6 and three, expressed support for the use of political violence against the government. When these additional filters were added, the total dropped to around 10% of voting age Americans. Uh, I think this is quoting the Washington Post story. Over and over, about 10% of the population, plus or minus a few percentage points, expressed the sort of views that Biden articulated, Republican or Republican-leaning, and in favor of the positions associated with MAGA. If one agrees with Biden that this group poses a threat to American democracy, it is reassuring that it constitutes a tenth of the public and not, as Biden's detractors had it, half. <clears throat> Back to Steve. So, about 10% of adult Americans, approximately 
39 million people and I'm not sure Steve got that uh, I, 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 I'm not sure Steve uh, brother I'm not sure you realize we're talking about Americans over 18 I'm not sure there's 390 million Americans over the age of 18 but anyway so about 10% of adult Americans, approximately 39 million people seem to believe the lies and conspiracies Donald Trump and his allies are spewing while also accepting the idea that political violence might be justified if Republicans are unable to get their way within the electoral system. These are America's morons. Maybe we should call them MAGA morons. How did we get here? I think we have probably a MAGA moron. What is this? It might be one of my MAGA moron neighbors has overheard me out here. So you guys might be getting ready to witness me being murdered by a manga moron. I don't know guys, I, 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 I have a pretty serious looking manga moron. He's, he's on his riding lawnmower, riding around on Good Friday. Good to see him out. I hope to hell he's not turning up my driveway. Anyway, what got us here? How about blind faith? If you want to truly understand the plague of morons in America, you must confront the concept of blind faith. What exactly makes faith blind? As defined by one advertising exec, who else? It is loyalty beyond reason. It is believing in something so deeply and so completely that you are unwilling or unable to abandon that belief under any circumstances. If confronted with evidence that your belief is false, you will ignore, dismiss, or deny that evidence. Evaluating evidence is an act of reasoning. If you suffer from loyalty beyond reason, from, from blind faith, you have no ability to question your beliefs. You have no way to confirm whether your beliefs are true or false. Once you have gone beyond reason, you are no longer able to test your beliefs against reality. You become a captive of your beliefs rather than a master of them, and most importantly, that is just how you like it. What does blind faith have to do with reasoning? Nothing at all. That's why it is so attractive to the not so bright. It relieves them from the burden of thinking, which they are happy to accept because thinking has never worked out well for them. They have lived their lives feeling diminished and dismissed by smart elites telling them what to think, what to buy, what to wear, and how to live. So, instead of having their own thoughts, they have chosen to get their ideas from others, and they have chosen to prioritize their feelings, which include their loyalties above any facts that might contradict those feelings. Feelings are top of mind and highly accessible. Facts are a, are a much, are much harder to deal with. And that's 
how we end up here. And then uh, they show a picture of Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, what is her? With her Trump hat on. That's how we end up with Marjorie Taylor Greene. So anyway, uh, that is the end of part one. In part two of this post, coming soon, I delve a bit into the science of how we think, why reasoning does not come easily to humans, how critical thinking differs from magical thinking, how the Republican Party's decades-old machine for manufacturing morons has been hijacked by Donald Trump, how 2024 might be the end of the Republican Party, and what America needs to do next if it wants to survive its MAGA moron problem. Well, it looks like I uh, survived my MAGA moron riding around on his little uh, riding lawnmower. Uh, he was probably uh, figuring out, uh, he was probably checking out where on this property to burn the cross tonight. Uh, <laughs> you know, I am, I am completely surrounded by uh, MAGA morons. And I'm uh, get, get, getting ready to uh, head out of here and go play uh, music with a couple of my buddies who are not, I would not call either one of them MAGA morons. Uh, they, these are both very intelligent men uh, who seem to have a lot of common sense. I have never asked them and they have never mentioned whether they voted for Donald Trump, but I'm uh, guessing that they voted for him twice and are getting ready to vote for him a third time. And I'm guessing that, uh, as reflects where I live, that 75% at least of the people in the audience uh, here on Good Friday will be voting for Donald Trump. But I hope they enjoy my harmonica playing. But I have to wrap this up and uh, get ready for my gig with morally flexible, not moronically flexible. Moronically flexible. There you go. There's a term. <laughs> uh, I'm... <laughs> Michael Campy, I'm sure you are biting your tongue when, when, when Ham on Little Tail is coming up with the term moronically flexible. <laughs> Happy Good Friday. Don't get strung up on a cross. Bye, guys. Okay, we got to get going.